I did it in the April of 2022. I mentor and train professionals into multiple fields like business and data analysis, project management and career success. Being into the field of teaching and mentoring, CBAP is one of the natural choices to upskill myself. CBAP also being the gold standard of BA certifications. So I definitely want to do it to kind of validate my capability or eligibility to teach professionals for the CBAP exam. My preparation strategy may not apply to most of you, but I'm going to share what should apply or what will apply to every aspirant. Let's start with the Babok. As the Babok is the reference book, you have to focus on Babok. And how can you focus on Babok? What should be your prep strategy? You should start by understanding first, how is the structure of the Babok? The core concepts, the knowledge areas, perspectives, underlying competencies, and the techniques. And you should start with understanding the core concepts. That chapter will allow you to understand all the vocabulary and key terms used in the book. Then you should start with the knowledge areas. So the way you should go through each of the knowledge areas is to first read the knowledge area, try and understand it, then go and take up the mock questions. You can practice with 20 or 30 questions go and understand the answer correctness very, very seriously. This is where you have to spend a good amount of time. So if you're getting it right logically, meaning you are able to figure out why one particular choice is correct, then it's perfectly fine. But if you're not getting it right, then you should read the explanation, go back to Babok to understand why did you get it wrong. So you can clarify your understanding and then go to the next set of questions. This you should repeat till you start getting the answers right logically. A score of in our question bank, a score of 70% is the ideal score. So this you should repeat for all the knowledge areas. There are six knowledge areas. Now what about techniques? Now there is always a question mark. Should I go through the techniques very thoroughly? What should I do? So you have to understand that there are questions which are asked on techniques, but related to the knowledge areas. There are hardly few, hardly any questions on techniques purely. So what is expected that how will you use the techniques in doing tasks which are described in the knowledge area? So basically this is like connecting the dots of techniques, how it is used in the knowledge area. So you'll find that in each of the knowledge areas, there's a section called techniques. So you should go and read it. What about techniques? You should understand the techniques on a fundamental basis. Somebody says brainstorming, somebody says focus group. You need to know what are these techniques? What are the primary objectives of using those techniques? And then you can apply into doing the tasks as described in the knowledge areas. This is a strategy which I used. Yes, I did. For me, the biggest challenge was part of Babok, which I needed to memorize. I was never good at memorizing things, even in, even in my college days. And as you know, with age, the ability to memorize reduces. During my college days, I used to memorize by writing the things multiple times because I was not able to memorize in any other way. Here also, I used to do the same method which I had used earlier. So in, in preparation for CBAP or CCBA, you need to remember certain things. For example, the name of the tasks for each knowledge area, inputs and outputs, its elements name. These are some of the things which you need to memorize. So what I used to do in the initial days, I used to write it multiple times on a piece of paper for each knowledge area, all the task names, the inputs and outputs and the elements name. And this I did till I was starting to have 
a clearer memory of these concepts now these th this method may not work for everyone because everybody is different so you have to use something which you are comfortable with you don't need to memorize everything from babok but just a few things let me tell you what do you need to memorize once again one knowledge areas and the tasks for every knowledge area input and outputs for each task the elements name for each task these are this, these are some of the things which you need to memorize you don't need to memorize how each technique is being used in the tasks that will be absolutely impossible to memorize everything else you need to read multiple times to be able to get a visual connection between the tasks how they are connected with the core concepts that should be more about understanding rather than memorize yeah i can share a few number 1 it's important to understand the connections or the relationships amongst the tasks inputs and outputs not only for a particular task but also across the tasks how a business analyst is planning and monitoring task is connected to elicitation and collaboration tasks there are certain inputs and certain outputs which are shared amongst the tasks so it's important to remember those connections or understand how they are connected number 2 mastering babok is critical now how do you know if you are getting better in mastering the babok what is the parameter we should use so i used a simple check once you are able to identify the task and its element from the question you have made progress and good progress because the questions as you soon as soon as you see the question you should be able to connect it to a particular task or an element of a knowledge area if you are able to do it that means you are at good ground as far as your preparation goes point number 3 case study questions are relatively easier but you have to take it up in the end not in the beginning because the case studies are pretty long and if you start reading it right up front you'll find yourself stressed out because the time left versus the number of questions left will start looking very disproportionate so always do that in the end so once so the fourth tip is once you finish all the scenario based questions come back to the case studies and many a times i found that instead of reading the entire case study if i just go through it once and start reading the questions immediately after that i was able to answer them quite quickly without trying to master the entire case study and trying to understand every sentence just read it once and then go back to the questions you can then go back to the case study and start figuring out where is the answer and that has worked for me last but not the least you may face challenges during preparation but you have to consider the fact that you cannot give up that there will be times when either your schedule or 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 the pressure of working in an organization will be too much so you, things may get delayed you might not be able to find time for a couple few days or maybe a week but you have to come back and start doing it again it's very important that you have to overcome these challenges so that you can achieve your goal i hope you like this video please click on the like button and also do subscribe to the channel and hit on the notification button thank you so much